Roguelikes are a genre of video game that have been getting pretty popular in the past several years. A roguelike game is loosely defined as a game that has elements of permadeath and procedurally generated environments. As in the player is sent to the beginning on death, and the world structure changes with each attempt. There is a subgenre of roguelike called roguelite. Roguelite? T? With a T? Not spelled like this, but spelled like this. In order to make this easier, I'm going to call roguelites R lights for the rest of the video. I'm sorry if that annoys you. R light games have these elements of permadeath and procedural generation, but also add a permanent upgrade or progression system that carries over between attempts. These progression systems are not the only way to make it an R light, but it is unquestionably the most common example. The light part of the word refers to the fact the game is a departure from the standard roguelike genre. I don't like R lights, normally. The reason for this is the way the light elements are implemented. From what I've noticed, R light games tend to start the player with a fraction of the game's mechanics, making the game feel unfair and sometimes even boring for a new player. And the only way to unlock these mechanics is to dump dozens of hours into the game. <clears throat> Hades. I swear, I'm one of the only five people in the world that thinks that game is mid. Almost every R light has this issue. Almost. Returnal doesn't. Returnal is a 3D platformer bullet hell R light developed by Housemark and <laughs> Climax Studios. Nice. The game is about not Brienne of Tarth, the astronaut mom whose ship crashes on a strange planet that she cannot escape from, even through death. This woman has a horrible existence and I feel so bad for her. The game has you fight through big scary creatures, a plethora of colored balls, and punishing environments to hopefully find a way to get our mommy home. On the journey you'll find new equipment as well as a variety of weapons to aid you in your quest to snap mama out of her bad trip. One way this game breaks from the standard r light formula is the weapon progression. The weapons follow an overall progression system through the unlock of permanent perks that carry over between runs, however, these perks only have a chance to appear on the guns you pick up, so you're not guaranteed anything in particular until you see the weapon. The perks can be upgraded to higher tiers to make them stronger too. There is also a leveling system called Weapon Proficiency that resets on every run. This is a level that increases as you play through a run. It determines how strong your weapons are and the number and potency of perks you will receive on new guns. Weapon proficiency has a much bigger impact on the strength of a run than perk levels. This is a departure from that standard r light formula, because it focuses more on skill and the progress of each individual run, rather than the overall progress and time spent playing. The higher level perks don't make a huge difference either. I see them more of a milestone or form of adding variety. The game is certainly completable, without going past tier 1. I would also like to add that all the weapons feel great to use. With some exceptions. Returnal also has a traversal upgrade system similar to Metroid, wherein you find permanent upgrades that help you navigate the hellscape that is the planet Atropos. I understand other R-lights like Dead Cells have done this before, but what I really like about the way it's implemented in Returnal is the fact that they are mandatory pickups. The first time you enter a new zone that has one of these upgrades within it, the upgrade is required to continue to the next zone. For example, the gate to the third zone requires the grappling hook to reach it, so you need to find the grappling hook before you continue to the next area. This way you can't miss out on a crucial upgrade, and the first time through a new area always introduces a new mechanic. These upgrades can also be helpful in early areas to help you find little secrets and bonuses, but these extra areas don't make or break a run. They just help a little so you're not necessarily at a disadvantage on your early runs. One type of the permanent items you find are gate keys. These keys unlock the gates to new areas. The way they're obtained is through defeating a boss, which means you don't have to fight that boss ever again if you don't want to. You can just run straight to the next gate of the next area, which is always in a separate room from the boss and normally in the first half of the map. The runs in Returnal can take quite a bit of time, being able to skip bosses, and sometimes entire levels, helps cut the runtime down significantly. There is a story to the game, but it is very cryptic and presented in an art housey way. It was enough to intrigue me though, and I normally dislike stories in video games. I've completed all the story portions of the game and I still don't get it. 
but it's interesting. I think it's a metaphor for motherhood or something. You have to pick up your kid's shit whenever you're home. You go to the store, collect parasites. I have no idea what's happening most of the time. 836, all your dreams are nightmares. You fight a big monster, die, and wake up in the front yard. You know, mom stuff. You can also skip most of the cutscenes, if you're not into it. If you really like the combat and want a break from the exploration aspect of the main game, there is a challenge tower mode that filters out everything but the combat. In this mode, you fight through a big-ass tower and compete against other players for a high score. It is definitely worth trying, because any weapon progress carries over to the main game, and there is some story stuff. I love the combat in this game, so I really enjoy the tower, even though everyone who plays it is way too good and will crush your spirit whenever you see their scores. I don't mean for this to sound like a review, but I feel like I should talk about the downsides of the game. The runs, as I mentioned before, can get quite lengthy, like two to three hours lengthy. I thought I wouldn't like the game because I knew this going in, but that time can be cut down by skipping areas you've already beaten. You can also suspend a game and come back to it later. I don't know how well this works, I never really used it, and it seems finicky, so I hope they can eventually make a normal autosave system like Binding of Isaac has. There is a lack of enemy variety. Once you complete the game a few times, you will have pretty much seen everything, and the synergies from the abilities you pick up throughout a run aren't very noticeable. The replayability of the game will hinge greatly on your enjoyment of the gameplay and interest in the story. I definitely think the game is worth 30 to $40 though. 60 to 70 is... uh... a bit much. The reason why Returnal is such a great R-Light, especially for people like me who don't like R-Lights, is that it doesn't feel like an R-Light. It has these elements and mechanics that are found in R-Light games, but it tweaks them just enough to make the game stand out and a far more enjoyable experience. There are overall progression systems, but they take a backseat to the internal run progression. The permanent upgrades give you a small bonus for the early game without giving a significant advantage over new players. Completed areas can be rushed through or even skipped to save time. There is an enigmatic story that may keep you playing, but the thing that keeps me coming back is the fact that the game is so damn fun. I hope more developers take a page from this game's book. It's an R-Light that doesn't punish the player for being new. You are given the tools for success from the beginning. It all just depends on how you use them. Hades 2 looks pretty cool though. Peace.